Normally I like to open the can of beer or whatever I'm going to be drinking on camera. Uh, I actually goofed up in the earlier intro. So tonight's episode, number 17, Gear and Beer. We're going to be doing it with some seltzer. And we're going to be talking about how to get more bang for the buck out of your camera before going out and buying another one. Let me be the first one to tell you we're talking about upgrading your cinema glass or just your camera lenses in this episode of Gear and Beer, number 17. Cheers. So I can already tell I'm getting a little rusty in regards to Gear and Beer. <laughs> Haven't done one in a while, and that intro was just not what I was digging, but that's okay, we're going to power forward, and tonight's episode we're going to be talking about glass. Now, recently I've been on a handful of shoots, whether it be for myself, or it be for Push Record, or just it be with some other groups, and um, one thing that is a common is you're going to see a lot of different camera bodies, and I think one thing that a lot of us kind of fall into a slump is we kind of convince ourselves that we need a new camera, and pretty, pretty regularly. Now, I'm going to blame that on marketing. I'm going to blame that on just a bombardment of technology of different options and really sometimes us personally just not be, being satisfied with what we have. So if you're kind of in that predicament where you're looking at your camera, you're looking at your footage, and you keep considering the idea of buying a new camera, I think you need to just pump the brakes a little bit, and I think you need to spend some time and looking at glass. Now, whether it be... Uh, most of you guys out there are probably shooting with like kit lenses. That's what most of us start when we first start filming when we shoot. And there are just a lot of limitations with kit lens. And really what it's going to boil down to is the look. So if you have met your expectations of your camera and you're just sitting there and you're thinking, I have got to go drop thousands to get another camera body, I want you to go ahead, get online, and like right now what we're going to do, we're going to hop on B&H, we're going to start with some lower level glass and we're going to make our way up, and for today's episode in particular, we're going to stick with what I would consider prime lenses, cine glass, really what's going to make a lot of cameras look a lot better. So, we're going to start with something that's very cheap, a lot of you are probably familiar with, and if you're not, go ahead and uh, kick back, relax, relax, and let's start talking about some broken on glass, baby. Now, a lot of people are going to laugh if you are on the higher end of shooting, editing, cinematography, you've probably at some point had this in your hand and then realized, I've got to take it to the next level. But if you're like myself, if you're beginning, if you are wanting to make to basically take that next step from kit lenses, Rokinon Cine Glass, I think is going to be really great. And here's why: you're going to get, <clears throat> you're going to get the look, you're going to get the feel, and you're going to get a nice low price tag. So I'm on B&H right now, and let's just say for shits and giggles, we're going to stick with EF mount because that's what I'm shooting with on the Panasonic S5. Which side note, I shoot with the Panasonic S5, the GH5, and the GH4. Uh, so. This is all glass that I would actually be adapting to my cameras, whether it be through speed boosters or whether it just be through my Sigma adapter for my S5. So this Rokinon package here, a bundle for $1,600, is going to include their 24, 35, 50, 85, all coming in at a T1.5 EF mount, and uh, that's a lot of glass for that price. Now, like I mentioned, if you're going to be on a super professional set, you know, Roganon's just not going to cut it. You might get laughed out of the room, but hey, you got to start somewhere, and let me be the first one to tell you, you and I, most of the footage that you're seeing on YouTube, most people, if they even had this, they're already kicking ass and taking names, and the footage that you're seeing probably already looks pretty good. So what am I getting at? For years, I've actually had used this uh, particular bundle paired up with the Sony A7S IIs, and I I'll be honest with you. You're not going to max out uh, with these pieces of glass because what I found is that I evolved with lighting uh, more through the years where it was like I started with this glass with this particular company and it looked great and what evolved was the lighting. It wasn't the glass got any better. But if you're someone with a kit lens, that Rokinon glass, that bundle is going to be awesome and it's a price tag that I think a lot of people can afford and feel comfortable that they got four pieces of glass for that price. Whereas as we talk about some of these lenses here in a minute, you're going to be paying significantly more for just one piece of glass. But Rokinon, you guys out there, whether you're a Sony shooter, you're a Canon shooter, you're a Panasonic shooter, I will promise you, if you're using kit glass, if you're using some cheaper pieces of glass, getting that Rokinon kit bundle is going to be nice. And hey, 
do yourself a favor. Do not just take my advice for it. Go out there, rent these pieces of glass, put them on your camera, see how they look. And like I mentioned earlier, this whole episode is revolved around, I don't want you guys to go out and spend thousands on a new camera body if you don't need one, when really you could probably go get yourself a single piece of glass and already raise the level of your production. But that's also going to depend on, are you doing good lighting? Are you doing good visuals? Are you doing good audio? So let's just not beat around the bush. you got to cover the elephant in the room. All right, but now that we've talked about some super cheap, I guess, cinema glass entry level for many of you guys out there, let's kind of make our way up into the next line, or I guess I would say range here. And the reason that I kind of got the urge to want to have a conversation about glass is I was on a recent shoot with Push Record. These guys were using some ridiculous high-end glass that we're going to talk about here at the end. And then like myself, I'm kind of in this like limbo where I'm trying to figure out if I want to upgrade some glass, but I'm not even sure. I love the Rokinon. I would totally purchase it. I've had some uh, Mikey glass that I really like, and I'm just, I'm in limbo here. Do I go, you know, big bang for the buck, or do I kind of keep it simple and get something like I mentioned, the Rokinon, or do I get the Mekki? But enough of that yapping about those. Let's move into that, I guess that next echelon. And I've used some of these pieces of glass, which is why I chose them. And the next one is going to be the Zeiss uh, Cine Primes, um, or I guess the Zeiss CP3s or whatever. Uh, Let's just go ahead and start with this particular kit. And this is going to be five lenses coming in at $20,000. Now that might sound like a lot to you guys. This is all EF mount, but Honestly, I've used these lenses. I used it on the Sony a7S II, uh, two of them, a Sony a7, a7 III, and also a Sony FS7. That's what I used all these pieces of glass on. And uh, images looked great. Uh, Functionality was awesome. They were a lot more compact than I had imagined, so that was kind of nice to have that ability for them to be a little bit more compact, a little bit more user-friendly, especially when it comes to lugging them around. But yeah, twenty-three or twenty thousand dollars. That's going to include a fifteen millimeter, twenty-five millimeter, thirty-five, a fifty, and an eighty-five. So you're going to be covering that full spectrum of glass that you're going to mostly most likely need in regards to just shooting most content. And yeah. $20,000 $20,000 brand spanking new. Now let's say you went ahead and you just made that investment on some glass like this. Now most people that are going to be doing that are most likely going to be running an operation so they can kind of at least um, write it off as a business expense. And then most likely if I were to even buy glass like this, I'd have to rent it out here and there just to recoup some of the value in regards to spending that kind of, uh, you know, that kind of cash. But That's going to be, you know, that next level of glass is going to be, we were talking $1,600, but also we will move our way to some Sigma Cine Glass. Now, Sigmas are going to be interesting. I've heard really good, awesome reviews about these uh, Cine Primes or whatever you want. They're not even Primes, actually. The particular ones that we have chosen today are the Sigma 18 to 35 millimeter and the 50 to 100 millimeter. Um, And look, dude, these things look super awesome. Uh, as far as what do we got on the da, 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 what is the actual is it a T two point oh yeah okay sorry I didn't do too much research on it I have heard about these thought I'd pull them up for you guys so we could have a discussion but yeah so went a bit a uh, bit above when we went with the Zeiss so we're taking a little bit of a step back with the Sigmas Sigma like I mentioned this is the eighteen to thirty five and the fifty to one hundred. Both of those coming in at $7,900. Now, the only complaint that I've heard of, and this was actually directly from a gentleman that worked with Push Record, just basically said the cinnamon glass was just a little too sharp. Um, Look, that's going to be hit or miss for some people. If you're shooting fully digital like myself with the S5, sharpness is something you're going to want to actually bring down a notch. So I kind of understood where he was coming from. But $7,900. Also, here's the biggest difference with these pieces of glass is having that focal range you're going to have some zoom. So you're going to have that 18 to 35. So not always stuck at 18, not always stuck at 35. You're going to have some flexibility, which is just going to be nice because you're not going to be constantly changing glass on the actual camera. And then the 50 to 100 just gives you some more versatility. And yeah, 7,900 bucks. I don't know. That might be one that I would probably consider renting, putting on my S5, GH5, the whole shebang, seeing how they look. And uh, yeah, putting putting them to the test once again. If you're going to be spending this kind of cash, I think you're going to want to see it in person. I just think it's a big leap of faith if you're spending more than a thousand dollars on a piece of glass uh, without using it. But I mean, hey, if there's enough reviews out there, you've seen enough footage and you've, uh, you know, someone that you truly trust is giving you some feedback, go ahead and put that credit card down, baby, and uh, up your camera game. So, 
the last piece of glass or gla piece of glasses, oh God, lenses, let's just say lenses that we're talking about are some Cook Mini S4i. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Okay, so I got my hands on these recently on a shoot with the push record guys, paired up with the Komodo 6K, two of them, and oh my a goodness. Unbelievable. Now the price tag here on B&H coming in at $47,000. Dude, that is going to be a little ridiculous for most of us. And um, yeah, I want to say, I don't even, I think that is for, that is for a bundle. 18 to 100. So let's click in here real quick. <laughs> and it is looking like you are going to get a 18 a 25, a 32, a 50, and a 75. And is that it? Yep. Oh, and a 100 millimeter. Yeah, 18, 25, 32, 50, 75, and 100 millimeter, all T2.8. We were shooting with these absolutely amazing looking beast of a lens. I mean, if I put it on my S or my S5, it would look well, one, it just would look silly, and it's a PL amount, so it actually wouldn't go on there unless I got a different adapter. But this glass paired up with those Komodos just looked unbelievable. If you're going to go pro, if you're going to go for an amazing look, the Cook look, from what I can tell, from what I've been told, is top-notch cinema quality. And yeah, you know, $47,000, but hey, this is that's investing into a whole different level, a whole different price range. And not only that, if you're showing up to the table with this kind of glass, your price tag in regards to just showing up is going to be ridiculously higher than than I'm normally, uh, you know, accustomed to. But hey, guys, I thought I'd have a conversation, you know, with you directly about, um, like I said in the beginning, so many new cameras, so many old cameras, so many good cameras out there, and I just feel like. From the marketing side of things, we're being bombarded that we need to get new cameras, we need to get new gear, all that stuff. And I'm just here to say that before you go all in on a new camera, spend some time doing some research on some glass. If you got friends out there, maybe ask if you could borrow it, put it on your camera. Maybe they won't even let you borrow it, but they'll come over and maybe shoot some footage uh, on your, your particular camera for you and then pass it along so you can work with it. But I don't know. It's one of those situations where if you're going to go all in and you're going to spend this kind of cash, you're going to invest in these kind of things, I highly recommend renting. And I also highly recommend, you know, spending some time doing your research, finding more alternatives to making your current situation better before going all in on something new, something different. But hey guys, Gear and Beer, episode number 17, a little bit weirder than normal, mainly because I'm just not in the studio. This is a whole different vibe. I'm totally interested in how the plans sound, but seltzer and gear tonight and camera lenses. But hey, you tell me what your thoughts are on seltzer. Lame, gay, cool, whatever. I don't care. You can bash me in the comments. If you like it, tell me why. If you hate it, tell me why. Tell me what you're drinking tonight and, uh, See you guys in the next episode. I don't know when. Hopefully uh, not as delayed as last time, but yeah, let's go. Mm -hmm.